Heinemann Higher, Chapter 8, Quadratic Functions, Exercise 8K, the mixed questions at the end. Number 1, sketch a couple of curves, both quadratics. Well, that's nice and easy. Straight away, you should know what that looks like. It's a positive x squared term. It cuts at negative 3. And if the signs are the same for the two terms involving x, then it passes to the left. So it should be going down like this somewhere. The axis of symmetry would be to the left of the y-axis. But anyway, sketch it. So that means what? Find where it cuts the axis and find the turning point. So, y-axis first of all. If you're on the y-axis, your x-coordinate is 0. And if the x's are 0, that means y is going to be negative 3. So straight away, it cuts at 0, negative 3. Somewhere about here. x-axis. If you're on the x-axis, your y-coordinate is 0. In which case, this expression here will be 0. 2x squared plus x minus 3 will equal 0. And let's just hope that factorises neatly. Otherwise, we're in for the formula. A little bit of no fun. But that's what? 2x times x. I have to be 3 times 1 there. The plus goes to the larger. So that must be the negative there. So x is going to be either the opposite. So it's negative 3 upon 2. Or x is going to be 1. But it does say what the points. So I better put it down. So I've got negative 3 upon 2, 0. And 1, 0. So, so far, I've got where it cuts the axis. Y-axis there x-axis here. Now for the turning point, I could differentiate it and then equate it to zero and so on. But if I've gone to the trouble to find the zeros, then I know the turning point is going to be in the middle of them because quadratics are symmetrical. If it wasn't a quadratic, I couldn't assume that the turning points are halfway between the zeros. But in the case of quadratics, they are. So I know that the x is going to be halfway between the two of those. I'll make a statement. So if I add them and half them, I'll have x is equal to, well, that's negative a half half, so x is negative a quarter. And if x is negative a quarter, that means y is going to be doing this. So it's going to be two times negative a quarter squared plus the negative a quarter minus three. So that's going to be then, well, that's going to be a sixteenth, so that's an eighth, so it's all out of eighths. So I've got one eighth minus two eighths minus twenty four eighths, so that's going to be negative twenty five eighths. So there's the turning point negative a quarter, negative twenty five eighths. Now it's just a case of putting it all together in this graph. So it's cutting at one. See, I put one about there, and then cutting it negative one and a half, negative three upon two. Passing through, let's just call that negative three, and at just negative a quarter about here, it's going to be just a little bit lower than that, because that's negative three and an eighth. So passing through this point here, negative a quarter, negative 25 upon eight. Then it's just a case of putting it in here, like that. Right. And so B. Now, you should know straight away what this looks like. It's got a negative x squared term, so it should be upside down. The number in its own is 8, so it should cut the y-axis at 8. The signs of the two x-type terms are the same, so it should pass to the left. The axis should be on the left of the y-axis. So it's going to look something like this. But find it specifically. Where does it cut the axis? Right, y-axis, first of all, that means x is 0. And if x is 0, straight away the x-terms disappear and you're left with 8, so it cuts at 0, 8 x-axis. If you're on the x-axis, your y-coordinate is 0, in which case this expression is 0. 8 minus 2x minus x squared is 0. Now, I don't like that with the negative x squared, but it is an equation, so I'm free to flip all the signs over. So x squared plus 2x minus 8 is 0. Then I'm going to hope that this factorises, so I don't have to use that formula. So I've got 2 times 4. The plus will go to the bigger burger one, opposite sign, which means x is equal to, put them in order, negative 4, or x is equal to 2. Or specifically, the points of intersection are 4, 0, and 2, 0. Right, that's where it cuts the axis. It cuts the y-axis at 0, 8. It cuts the x-axis at negative 4 and 2. The turning point, again, I could differentiate to find the turning point. Negative 2x and the minus 2 and so on. But I know that it's going to lie halfway between the two in the case of quadratics only. In other ones, you can't assume it's going to be midway between any of the zeros. 
Right, so turning point means x is going to be halfway between them. We'll just add them in half here. So x is going to be negative 2 halved negative 1. And if x is negative 1, then y is going to be feed it into this, or not so safe here because it's the negative of that. Remember, I flipped the sign, probably safer feeding it into that. So it's going to be 8 minus, well, let's spell it out, minus 2 times negative 1 minus negative 1 squared. So it's 8 plus 2 minus 1, which is 9. So there's a turning point at negative 1, 9. So now it's just a case of putting it into this graph here, like that. There it is, question one.